Hey, everybody. Um, look, I'm back for another review. Uh, well, the first review uh, of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8. If you're watching this, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to all of you who have. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. So Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8, Episode 1. How they've had eight seasons in five years. Okay. So Arrested Redevelopment. <laughs> This title is shady, too. Anyway, so the episode begins with Martel going to jail for a harassing communications charge, okay? <sighs> okay, but anyway, this, this episode was still pretty good. Um, So we get Stormy's ugly ass and her funny-looking ass husband, uh, who I would have left alone until he said that Mel calling the police on Martel was being vindictive, okay? And I'm going to tell you why that bothers me. Because people on this show have either ignored Melody when she was trying to tell them what was going on with Martel, and if not outright dismissing it, then conjuring up situations where they have put her in the same room and seen with a man that has at least been verbally and mentally abusive toward her, even that we watched on television. If she called the cops, first of all, black people by and large, and I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but I know I'm not. Do not call the cops like that. So when people do finally fucking call the cops, there's a reason, okay? And especially black women on black men. Even to their own detriment. Martel has been doing all, all this shit all along that is harmful. And I think that those court cases, she realized uh, that there are things that have to be documented because otherwise it will not be believed, especially when you're a black woman in court. And I think that's part of the reason why she has had to do what she had to do. So Mel is meeting with private security. She has hired a security team to protect her and her family, this, that, and the other. That's what makes me think that, and this is just my thoughts, makes me think that um, Martell has done things worse than this or something like this before. Because when we think about how long she's known him, and these are her ways of taking precautions, something's not right. It's really not. And is it just, I don't know what, what these mean. If somebody knows, please put it in the comments. Please feel free to put it down there. Because um, I saw her security, and they had a little hat on. I was like, well, yeah, there's security. But what is what people have in these American flags that don't look like American flags? And granted, I probably wouldn't fuck with it either way, but ever since people started that Blue Lives Matter shit, when I see hats like that, that that security guard hat on without a flag, this I don't get it. I really do wonder, because I've seen it a lot of places, and it's just, just different ones, and I don't get it. Anyway, so Martel's talking to his mother, Marlene. <laughs> cigarette cigarette face Marlene, okay, uh, about getting arrested for a text message. That cannot be the whole story, and we know it's not. Nobody is getting arrested for a text message they sent over a year ago. Stop playing with us, Martel. Stop it. Him and his enabling ass mama talk about they don't understand why she won't leave him alone. I said, excuse me? This is the same man that was screaming all in that house in, in the backwoods of Houston about how she treated him. Knowing he lying. Knowing he's lying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And Mel's brother is a good one. I mean that in the best way. Because the best thing he could do is pop up because anybody who knows how crazy men can be, especially controlling and abusive men can be, after they've been crazy with their sister, it's important to pop up sometimes. Because women don't always tell people about abuse because they're embarrassed, they're ashamed, they think they're going to be judged for it. And the bottom line is a lot of people who care about you won't. Um, some of them will. But... Popping up sometimes is necessary, just to make sure they're okay. So Martel gets arrested. I don't care. Um, a sense, well, not really. Like he gets, he has the warrant served, whatever. While he was picking up their kids from school, he dropped one off at tennis. God bless that one. She didn't have to be around for that. He went to pick up a record from the records office, as he puts it. <laughs> and then he was told there that there's a warrant for his arrest. She's saying um, Marlene and them fucking 
backless shoes she had did y'all see them them shits was bad and i'm not even a fashionista like that but they were really bothering me like i just <laughs> it was just throwing me off that red shirt them tan shoes and her cigarette face was just driving me up a wall so anyway um she was like this is heartbreaking because the kids have nothing to do with it. it's about the kids about the kids was it about the kids when uh martel was sleeping around with all these women was it about the kids when Martell was calling Mel a hoe on TV and said to her, you're one of those hoes now? After cheating on her with multiple women, calling her out of her name, and then having some little retarded ghetto nursing school dropout bitch, like, taunt her? Like, are you fucking kidding? When was that about the kids? Martell takes no responsibility for anything. And now we see why, because he has a mother that enables that shit. So when he said, look, I'm the best father I know, I was like, you probably don't, yeah, I, I don't doubt that you don't know any other good fathers. <laughs> like, you say that, like, black men are typically known for knowing other good fathers, so they think by doing something, that makes them a good father. No, it does not. The standard is too fucking low. And the bottom line is you're not a good father if you're always dogging out the mother. You started this shit, Martell. Melanie gave you multiple chances. Get the fuck out of here. So then we get Mel in this continuously fake ass scene with her brother though. Because my thing is, there is no way in fucking hell this is the first time Mel done caught her brother up. I forget what her brother's name is. I, I bet it probably starts with an M. I can't memorize all these M names. Um, ain't no way in hell she didn't already give these details about this Martell story. Okay, he probably done heard this story several times. All right, but anyway, she starts telling him Martell hatched a plan to take their marital sex tape and create a fake Instagram account and then pretend it was uh, another man that she was having sex with, like crazy shit, but it's definitely something Martell would do. All right. And, and that's why you got arrested. It's revenge porn. Okay. And those text messages prove it. Stop acting like talking shit in a text message can end you up in jail. Okay. No, you were there for three hours. First of all. And if that's the case, everybody everywhere in the USA with a phone over the age of 12 would have some kind of juvenile or adult record. Martell missed me with the bullshit, okay? But Mel, we are not going to act like, once again, that you haven't told your brother this story because that, that was kind of painful for me to watch. This was not news. The, uh, child. Then we get back to Miss Marlene. She is a toxic mother. She's the kind that defends him no matter what. Like I said, to avoid exposing her failures and shortcomings as a mother. And I am not suggesting that every human being is not going to have shortcomings, especially when you're raising kids. But see, when you have this kind of product of a child, something went fucking wrong somewhere. And it kept going wrong. Okay. So her saying, well, you a man, uh, but you can't just let her do anything she wants. I have found over and over again, that shit that she was saying is what boys remember. I will never forget um, a friend of mine at the time when I was in college was saying, um, you know, her mother had, you know, had been in bad relationships with whatever. And her older brother, she said, her mother used to say, you know, you don't hit women. You don't just go around hitting women. But if a bitch puts her hands on you, you fuck her up. And she was like, and that's all my brother remembers. And he's abusive to all of his girlfriends. He's always been abusive. And she's somebody who knew that. Like, you know how people try to hide certain parts of their lives? That's an active part of his personality. Now, does that come with resentment and all kinds of abuse and experiences? Of course it does. But whereas I feel like girls develop some kind of idea differently, boys tend to hear the parts that they want they stick with it, and you have got to instill that in a child from the gate, especially men, because they have physical power over women by and large, okay? Um, 
if you give a boy a slither of permission, that's why you have to teach them to control themselves. That's why you have to stay on little boys. And I know this even from teaching. So Carlos messy ass FaceTimes Mel while she's talking to her brother. Like he don't have the call sheet and know they having a scene over there. But anyway, he's talking about their podcast tour um, and to check on her because of the blogs. Carlos, you are the last person I would confide in, but that's also why I'm not on nobody's reality show. Anyway, he's making the worst mistake. And by him, I mean Carlos. Producers who don't know how to stay out of the limelight and just produce good TV and just get too caught up in the show they're producing is always a bad move. And that's just one of the many reasons why I can't stand Andy Cohen's racist, sorry, dumb ass. And then, Carlos, you inserting yourself on the show and having a YouTube channel to interview the reality stars. You either have produced, are producing, know from producing. It's just, it just seems like you just can't get enough of the attention. And even though you're producing it, you kind of want to have the attention. And if I had produced the kind of TV concepts Carlos had, I would not create a YouTube show like that. There's no need for it. There needs to be a level of mystique, and we don't have that. It just seems like a lot of blurred lines with him. And quite frankly, I just find his fake laughter and stuff like that. I, I just, mm, 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 it's a no for me. So Stormy comes to talk to Nell at her daycare. Um, do, I really hope it's that Nell films at the end of the day. Because I have yet to hear any kids running around. Anybody knows anything about having children anywhere near you. It is impossible for them to be completely quiet. Okay. It is I, I, like I, we, we never hear any kids or see any. I mean, and granted, even if we just saw their faces blurred out, like <laughs> I just don't get it. But I imagine if she's, you know, in charge of a daycare with small kids. She can't just have cameras in there. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So she has, Stormy comes in there and her breasts are out. Like not just simply big. They're like. Out. And I just think the outfit wasn't bad. I guess I just feel like, I don't know. I don't, I, mm. Anyway, um, it looks like she had her body adjusted, but I only noticed that because Nell brought it up and Nell was like, oh my gosh, you know, she looks so different. She looks so good. And I was like, no, she don't. And, <laughs> she don't. Stormy is so ugly to me. And I'm just sitting up here like, yeah, maybe she had her body adjusted. Too bad she can't get that face adjusted. Cause, and it wouldn't help. It wouldn't help. And Stormy, I just don't like the fact that her lip and her nose are perpetually touching. She's built weird. She's always talking shit. She's funny looking. Her husband is weird looking. I just can't. I can't. Not to mention that mama of hers. Please don't bring her on the show. Cause she triggers me in a whole nother way. So she asked Stormy what's going on. Like, who are you talking to or not talking to? I said, no, it's so petty and messy. She is, never mind. So Stormy jumped in so quick. She couldn't wait to start talking shit. Oh, she couldn't wait. She is just a gossipy, ugly bitch. She just look like one of them witches that you would get out of like those early 1990s animated Disney movies. But anyway, so she talks about how Kiki was telling the internet all about their scenes on the show. Long gone is the fourth wall, okay? And how Kiki was mad at Mel, but didn't say she was mad at Mel. Stormy, hating is confused admiration, darling. For somebody who doesn't fuck with Mel like that, you can't help but to keep Mel's name in your mouth, followed by all your other ca castmates, like Tisha, like destiny again all right so how did stormy know all of this info about kiki in the blogs and now pretending like she didn't know any of this y'all live in this pumpkin carriage town speaking of disney movies like the one cinderella had to disappear y'all live in one of them pumpkin carriage towns it's like nell saying she hadn't seen stormy you know it seemed like almost since the reunion like girl bye i know y'all has to frequent the same place ain't that many places in huntsville Stop fronting on me, okay? Don't play with me like that. <laughs> Just cut it out, all right? So then Nell can't help but within minutes to remind me why I don't like her, okay? Why I just, just something about Nell ain't never set with me. She too, she's just ghetto. 
She's country ghetto, and I just can't. <sighs> so she heard about the text message in Martell and said she doesn't agree with it. I'm going to tell you right now, that's when I already started getting triggered and why I get annoyed when she started by saying, we as an African-American community, stop that shit. Stop, 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 stop. One, generalizing. Some people need to be locked up. Martell has rolled up on you several times. Now, you don't want to see anybody go to jail if it can be resolved. Do you really think all the times that Mel was going to counseling with him, that wasn't an opportunity for her to try to figure out how to resolve it? Like, I just, I, enough of this shit. I also knew someone in college, and I think I may have told this story before, my freshman roommate, who didn't tell me this until months later, like it may have been around exams or something like that. And she said, well, you know how, like when I got back um, from Christmas break or whatever, I just kind of was laying in the bed for a few days or whatever. I said, yeah, you know, I was a little worried about you that day because I just felt like you had slept all day. She was like, well, I hadn't slept. This is just New York. I hadn't slept, um, you know, much over the break. And I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, I didn't want to ask about anybody's business. And her ex-boyfriend, she happened, he, he abused her um, when they were dating back in high school. And she was at a grocery store or something like that and had come out and he had approached her. You know, because obviously it was an abusive relationship, so she kind of like escaped. And she waited a year or so before she came into college. And this is why I feel the way I feel about things like this. He caught her like trying to choke her, right? Mind you, this is somebody she hadn't even dated in like forever. And I think, I don't want to say too much, but he physically threw her over a car and then proceeded to continue to beat on her. And as she was like trying to fight him off or whatever, there were people around watching. And she said she was basically yelling to people, call the police, call the police. These motherfuckers, men and women, black men and women watching this shit say, nah, nah, we don't need another black man in jail. What the, the fuck we don't? Give a fuck about no black man being in jail. He's a fucking psychopath. You know how traumatizing that is to the victim? So this is why it's very hard for me. And I'm not even saying Nell even means it on this level, but I'm, I'm talking about this more broadly speaking. Because nothing is more heartbreaking than to know, one, if something like that happened to somebody you considered a friend um, that you were living with. I mean, you know, a roommate, but you, I mean, still. And the fact that we were pretty, pretty tight. She didn't even mention that two months later. And I don't even know what, I can't remember exactly what even led her to kind of like spill her guts. But I was like, damn, she's been holding this in for months. And so coming back to school was almost like an escape. And I just, this stuff is more dangerous than, I don't think it's that people don't know these stories. I don't think, there are many women who have not been somehow not I'm not saying abused, but at least know of abuse, but yet we still deny that. And I don't like that because I think it has very detrimental consequences. Anything could have happened to her. He could have killed her. And we know how a lot of those situations play out with women being dead. And no, I'm not willing to defend black men at the expense of black women's livelihoods. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. So I don't want people to think I'm just, you know, talking outside of my neck. No, because I see where this shit goes. And that's not something I like to talk about, but I... Anyway. So, um, 
I was like, Nell, do you know any of these details or are you just reading the Huntsville Daily or something? I don't even know this name of the paper, but you get what I'm saying. So why is it when the mother reacts, all the pressure is on her to handle it like an adult? They didn't ask that of Martell. It's like, well, you need to hear what Martell's saying. Martell's saying. And that, never mind. Stormy will sit in front of this fucking camera and run her mouth. Because she kept running her mouth. She brings up Moses and Destiny, and it goes left. First of all, I didn't know who the fuck Moses was. I had to be honest. I thought they was talking about LaBera even when I saw the trailer. <laughs> and I was like, that don't look like LaBera. I don't I was all kinds of confused. I don't really follow this stuff outside of it. Like, you hear stuff like if it's on the shade room or something like that. But I don't, you know. Um, so Stormy, the producer's name apparently is Sunny, and they said she's with Destiny's ex-man. Stormy, this is why you almost went bankrupt and lost everything, because you don't know how to use this show to advertise for your products, but you will get on here and gossip all day, and that's why I don't fuck with you. I don't, I... It's great. I'm glad she's finally selling some products. Not really. But like, she doesn't use this show to promote her business. This is like, she don't get it. That's how I know she's not like a good business person. Okay. But in, in Huntsville, I'm sure anything can happen. So Nell gives terrible advice. When she said, another thing I can't stand is when women say, um, this is what I can't stand. But when Nell was like, I tell women, a man will only do what you allow him to do. Men are responsible for their behavior. Stop infantilizing them. And the core tenet of misogyny is to blame women for men's behavior. Also, I hate that because you're telling me that women who are physically abused by boyfriends, husbands, and are afraid to leave because he's pulled out a gun or a knife and threatened her life more than once, that it's happening because she allows it. She's trying to fucking survive is what the fuck she's trying to do. It's not easy to just get up and leave. It's dangerous bullshit advice to then gas like the victim. Yes, there is such a thing as somebody being a victim. You allow Fletcher to cheat on you? You want to go there? Don't pull it. Don't pull it. So we get Destiny meeting up with Tisha. Destiny, nobody missed you. Oh, okay, I shouldn't say that. I don't miss you because you don't give anything. Uh, you have that kind of Phaedra Parks, Giselle Bryant thing going on. To, but the difference is you're less popular as an individual. But the being on a reality TV show and then trying to guard all your business, but then wanting the benefits of, you know, the check and the exposure on a reality TV show. Destiny and Tisha meeting up was so fake. So Destiny doesn't like Tisha. I can tell you that right now. Not because I know that for a fact, just I can tell. And Tisha and Destiny have nothing in common. It's hard for me to believe that Destiny even respects Tisha at all. Tisha is not a strong-willed person. She's not, and, and whatever. And Destiny doesn't have that mindset. We can tell. Just by the way Destiny has carried herself and her inability to even show vulnerability. They're not the same kind of person. But you know. People who don't like each other will get together if they don't like you more. I know that for myself, but in this case, the person they don't like is Mel. Anyway, apparently Destiny's friend, Sonny, married her man. But see, this is where I have to stop <laughs> the conversation. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. If Sonny is married to Moses, it's not Destiny's man. So I think we need to stop saying that. Now, I'm going to tell you, the only time I probably felt differently about a situation like that was with, dare I say, the throwback, Tara, Amina, and Peter Guns. Amina saying, well, that's my husband. Everybody's like, well, that's her, that's her husband because they're married. I don't give a fuck. Tara had been with him all that time. Cut it the fuck out. No, that was not the same thing to me. Tara was sleeping with her man. Amina, you were sleeping with Tara's man who you happen to make your husband on a drunken night. Okay, just girl by. Anyway, but this is not Destiny's man. <laughs> okay, so she said Sonny was her producer for this show. Like I said, long gone is the fourth wall and wanted to help her manage her singing career and all this stuff. 
She said her and Moses apparently have been friends for 15 years. I vaguely remember her maybe mentioning that. Now, if I'm being honest, and I am, nothing about a chick doing this surprises me. The stories Destiny, Destiny was telling, nothing that surprises me. I met too many chicks like this in my life, especially in college. Just me being with somebody. All of a sudden, girls want to be with this same guy who they didn't even recognize. Cause the kind of guys I dated were never really like, <laughs> God, I think people expected me to be with. Um, and it's still kind of true. And that's how I learned to listen to my intuition. Cause you're still growing up then. Because even girls I consider my friends, you know, they saw me when somebody start making snarky remarks or I would see become especially flirty and it made me uncomfortable. And I just let it go and be like, oh, maybe I'm taking it to, you know, the next thing I know, they try to get, we'd fall out. They try to get close to my man I dated or just a guy that showed me, showed interest in me, right? Like not even somebody I dated or go and befriend one of my enemies. So it's believable. It's very believable. But honestly, I didn't believe Destiny's relationship with this guy. And perhaps because in the words of Karen Huger, he lived in the phone. It never seemed real to me. It just seemed like something she was doing to make LaBerrick jealous after that divorce that she never really told us the details about. You see what I mean? So I, you know, it's just like, okay, okay. Um, and Sunny girl, why would you want a man that was dating your friend more publicly than you? You stupid too. Anyway, Destiny's not good at being vulnerable. You could tell she wanted to cry. She was keeping it together. And I, I get that to an extent. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like she's always kind of holding information. Even this now, I'm sure is painful and humiliating for her because nobody wants to be treated like that. Nobody. But I also think by talking shit about Sonny and Moses, it still gives her space to not say so much about her and what she's going through. And it's totally fine. Like, I understand somebody like Destiny who doesn't, because I'm like that. But I also don't go and get on a reality show where everybody else is sharing their life, though. You see what I mean? Um, anyway, so Tisha and Destiny, Tisha tells Destiny she needs to sit down with Moses because they were friends. And I'm like, but now he's married. Does it really matter? And they start talking about Mel. Here we go. We're back to the old school formula. When all else fails, let's talk shit about Mel. Okay, Mel don't even have to film with these bitches. And y'all are always making her relevant. Always. Y'all some hating ass bitches. And it's not even like, I do go up for Mel. I'm not gonna lie. But not because of like, I even like her. It's really because of her haters that I'm just kind of like, y'all just hating on her. <laughs> like, y'all really are. And Mel still knows what to do with this show. You will see Mel working. You will see Mel producing products. You will see Mel doing empowerment seminars. Destiny. Take notes. Tisha, I, 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 I can't. I, I just know it's a waste of time trying to give you a pep talk. So they bring up Mel and Carlos's like little podcast event. Tisha says she's not going because... She don't want to be around the melometers. Tisha said the women who are melometers are middle-aged women who are miserable in their lives. Tisha, first of all, I don't think you're that happy in yours, so I don't know if you want to go there. And then Destiny said they're older than middle age, and I have never seen a more toxic group of people. Bitch, yes, you have. <laughs> You've never seen a more toxic group of people. Them people are internet thugs. If Girl, stop. Stop. Don't be mad because you ain't got no, you know, fan group like that and how are destiny and tisha talking about how i'm not going oh it's a hell no for me and tisha you admit out your mouth that you didn't receive an invitation don't sound like to me they wanted you to come because those are two people that could have made sure you had it and they knew they was filming for this show <laughs> girl bye yeah I, i'm not going yeah well good you weren't invited and couldn't get no ticket anyway so when Destiny said women who have critical thinking skills, they don't do what the melometers do. 
Destiny, destiny, honey. Maybe I could have rocked with you on that. If you weren't talking to dumbass Tisha, I was done. Anyway, I was done. So the Carlos and Mel podcast, I hate the term raindrops. I just think it's corny, whatever. Mel was serving looks as usual. That color block suit was cute. Um, Stormy, Mel's brother, Miss Van are there. Apparently Mel didn't go to the prom, so Carlos gave her a tiara and a sash. That was cute. Um, as we can see, Mel's whole life fell apart because she wasn't able to have the normal high school experience of going to the prom. Exactly. Pay attention, young women. You ain't got to do all them things. Just keep your head up, keep working hard, and keep on moving. Keep it pushing. Life will go on, I promise you. He asked her about um, if she had any regrets with her life being on full display, even though she has the number one show on OWN. She was like, no, look at all these women out here. First of all, there are a lot of women, I'm sure, who look at Melody and like her. And, and there's somebody on this show for many people, some people to identify with. <laughs> but don't take that away from Mel. And I think because she did what a lot of women do, she didn't leave immediately. When she found out her husband was cheating, they had a marriage. They had kids, three kids, and then they ended up having a fourth one on the way. Like, life happens, and it sucks. And then for her to get the strength to walk away and still keep it together. Because the way Martel was talking, and hell, I, I was kind of under this impression too, when he was like, well, I got you out the classroom, which I personally found offensive as a teacher. Uh, and Mel pointed that out when he said it. But now that we see them separated, we see Mel was carrying this all along. But that's the trial by the fire. And I think to try to act like, oh, these other people are just so... When I was looking around that crowd, I was like, okay, no, these people are like my age. <laughs> and like in their 40s, maybe. Like, girl, bye. Anyway, so he asked her about her sex life. I was over it. I don't care. Um, and then Mel starts telling us that she could count on one hand the number of boyfriends she had prior to Martel because they got married young. I believe it. The type A focused, hardworking, pretty girl doesn't usually have a lot of boyfriends. Because she's handling business, and she's pretty, and she'll eventually find somebody. And in Mel's case, it was pretty quick. She had to go dating everybody. Anyway, so he brings up the text, the text, the text that was about this, you know, led to the warrant arrest, something like that. So Carlos said Martel lied about last season. Everything that comes out of Martel's mouth was a lie, so it didn't matter to me anyway. Lied about production telling him to bring Mel flowers because he got embarrassed because she didn't want <laughs> And he seemed really pissed. Car Carlos seemed pissed. He was like Martell out on the show, on production. He did that to the cast. And that's not cool. My producers leave their homes, their towns, their families to come and produce a good show. Okay, so he asked about Martell's arrest. Oh, gosh. I really hope this dies down soon. <laughs> and if she ever thought her life would end up like this, or she would have to do what she did to the father of her children. Side note, what kind of shirt did Carlos have on? Because that was bothering me with that alligator sitting in the chair where typically on a Lacoste shirt, it would just be an alligator. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So she says she wishes that she would have had kids by someone else. And I believe she feels that way. But in my humble opinion, I don't think she should have ever, ever fucking said that out loud in any public forum for as long as she was standing on this planet. That should have stayed between you and your mother in one of them deep mama daughter conversations in her bedroom when it's just you and her and you crying, you just letting it out. I do not think that's something you should have ever said out loud. Cause I think it's way too easy for people to get a hold of that and then get back to your kids. And I think that statement out loud, while it may be cathartic for you, is going to ultimately be hurtful to your children. Like when my parents broke up, I, I don't care what happened. You know, my mother would always say, you know, yeah, you know, whatever, it didn't work out. But she would say, the one thing in my life that I have never regretted was having all five of y'all. Never. She would always, I mean, it's not even like we thought it, but it, it just, 
I think she felt it necessary to always say that. And it was, I just think, Mel, you shouldn't have said that out loud. So Carlos decides to bring out Sonny and Moses. Now you talking about that shit was some fucking messy, low class, Mona Scott, first three, four seasons of Love and Hip Hop New York, first two seasons of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta kind of messy. That was not necessary because I didn't know who the fuck Sonny or Moses was. I told you I thought it was LeBaron. Anyway, that shit was messy as fuck. So Stormy was like, this is messy as hell, but I'm intrigued. And I was kind of with her on that. And I ain't never really with uh, Stormy. Um, and it is messy. And it is fucked up. Because they both decided, and by that, by they, I mean Sonny and Moses, um, to come on this show, this podcast, and this podcast that you know is being filmed because you have to sign the release, for Love and Marriage Huntsville, which you were a producer of the show on. And you know how this goes. And you chose to come up here to clear your name. Bitch, we didn't even know who you were. Moses, I don't know who you are. Neither one of y'all. What are y'all doing? Get away. Um, especially after we had never seen him in person. Or on the show with Destiny. And Mel, you messy too. For the face you made when he brought up Destiny's situation. And something in me. Destiny, I don't. I don't know. I don't really feel much for Destiny in this. And I think the thing is because I really never thought that relationship was real. I felt like that was just something she was saying. She wasn't willing to show that part of her life. I do. I did start thinking about how mad Carlos was because it seemed like Destiny got fired, right? About her not sharing her life. And now I'm my wheels are spinning like, well, did that producer go back and basically tell Carlos who was, you know, like executive over the show that she's not doing this, she's not doing that to kind of get her off of TV to let all this other shit lie down because she knew it was going to come out. I don't know. Can I tell y'all how happy I am? How happy I was that we didn't have to deal with Marceau, Kimmy, or Maurice's episode? Because I've had, a, and Kimmy, I hope you are well. I will never stop saying that as my mother still, you know, is dealing with her challenges with breast cancer. Um... But Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy does pick me stuff that annoys me because I feel like she could be so much better than that and she's choosing not to be. And Marceau and Maurice are just, they are so dated. They are just dated men. I just can't. Anyway, I hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend and I'll talk to y'all soon.